So you're a creative entrepreneur and you find yourself struggling financially. Maybe you're not able to charge enough or make enough or keep enough money to keep your passion going. Today, I wanna share with you how to get your money right as a creative entrepreneur. My name is Sean Tom Bagahan. I'm the owner of Butler Branding. We're a creative agency in Central California and we teach other creative entrepreneurs the business of creativity from the perspective of a creative agency. When I do agency coaching one-on-one -on -one with different uh, coaching clients, one of the number one things they always say is how do I make more money, right? So why, why are we trying to do coaching? A lot of times it's we need to solidify our processes, but you know, 90% of the clients that I coach, they think that it's a money issue. Uh, a lot of times it is, but I wanna talk to you about four things, four tips to get your money right as a creative entrepreneur. The very first one sounds kind of stupid or simplistic, but let me kind of go deep into this, okay? The first one is charge enough. You're like, okay, I just watched this video to make more money, how to get my money right. He's just telling me to charge more money. Okay, well, think about this. Most of the clients that I'm coaching, when they are dealing with their clients, it's almost like they're talking themselves out of getting a higher paycheck from their client by negotiating themselves out of a better deal. And even sometimes when the client isn't even asking for a better deal, it's like, well, I could charge this, but how about I'll do it for this rate? It's something weird about creatives to where they don't like talking about money, they get all weird about it, and they just wanna save people money. The reality is 99.999% of the creative entrepreneurs that I coach, none of them are swimming in bathtubs full of money and they're just greedy, just money grubbing people. Most of the time they're just trying to pay their bills, trying to feed their families and trying to live their life. And so when it comes to offering their services, they shouldn't downplay or devalue what it is they actually do. So it's one thing to say that, but the thing that helped me get out of the mental funk of not wanting to charge more was when my coach, Chris Doe, told me and walked me through this mental exercise that I want you to walk through as well. So he said, Sean, what would it look like if you were to roll the red carpet out for your client? Right, so I want you to think about this. This is like my little picture of a butler serving, you know, it's this white glove service. You're serving someone. What would it look like if you were to serve someone the way you want to serve them? And so he walked me through it and we talked about from the very first point of contact to complete fulfillment and we're done with the project, what would that process look like? And so I started kind of dreaming up in my mind what this process would look like. Uh, a client would come to a, a nice office in a nice conference room and I'd be able to give them them a gourmet cup of coffee for our introductory meeting. After that introductory meeting, uh, we sealed the deal. Uh, the very first step that I'd like is to do like a half day facilitated discovery session with the client to where like, we're not gonna do any creative work. We're just gonna learn about their business through a structured framework. I'm, I'll spend a half day with them. And then after that half day facilitated workshop, I'd have two weeks to develop a strategy before we even did the execution on that strategy. So half day facilitated workshop, followed by two weeks of developing a strategy, getting approval on that strategy. And then once that strategy is approved, I would love to be able to hire top tier people to help me. So I'm not just doing all of the work myself. I'm hiring maybe the, a, a content writer to help me with content. And let's just pretend it was a, a rebrand uh, that included graphic design, content writing, and a website redesign. Uh, I wanna hire a graphic identity designer to help me with the identity, a content writer, a web designer, maybe a photographer, right? Even though I have the capability of doing these things myself, I'd rather hire people that are experts in what they do and build a team to do the best possible work that I could conceive of, right? So I was just kind of like dreaming up what would it look like if I were to roll out the red carpet, no, and money, time wasn't an issue. All right, so we did that and that's the kind of work that I want to do. And so then the next question is, how much should you charge to serve people the way you wanna serve? How much would it cost you? And your cost is not just your expenses. You're thinking like, okay, well, I gotta hire a graphic designer. So if it's you know $500 to pay a graphic designer for a particular project, I gotta charge an extra $500. No, you gotta make profit on top of that $500. Uh, same thing uh, with any other contract or freelance, you gotta make profit on top of that, plus the, the time that you're spending. And so when you're saying yes to one client, two weeks to create a strategy, let's say four to six weeks to execute on that, that means you're saying no to other work. So what is the opportunity cost? What is it costing you to say no to all of this other work? That means you have to pay your bills, your overhead, all this stuff. So what is it actually going to cost you to serve clients the way you want to serve? So once you figure out how much it's gonna cost you to serve clients the way you wanna serve, then you need to charge clients what you need to charge to serve them the way you wanna serve. So 
charge enough. The vast majority of problems of not getting your money right is from my experience and talking with other creative entrepreneurs is they're not charging enough. Second is collect progress payments. This was huge. All right, when, when I first started doing creative work, I didn't know any better about different payment schedules and things like that. And so I just do what most people do, 50% deposit, 50% on completion, half up front, half when I'm done and delivered. And that's great if a project takes two weeks. But what we found ourselves doing is that we would take a deposit, we would do 80 to 90% of the work, and we got stuck in revision cycles, which that's a video for another day, but revision cycles would kind of eat up most of our time and then we we're chasing the other 50% after doing 90% of the work and who knows when that was done and sometimes we'd even launch projects before we even collect the balance. That is a no-no. So one of the things that I had learned was to collect progress payments. There's a few different ways we do this. Now, I'm not completely against collecting a deposit up front, 50% and 50% on completion. You can totally do that. What I recommend is you only do that for projects that are gonna be three, maybe four weeks at the max, and there's a definite clear start and an end time and they're paying it on that schedule. They're paying the, the, the balance on that schedule regardless of where you are in the project, okay? So you have to set your terms and conditions clearly, but the general rule of thumb, 50% deposit, 50% on completion, only on projects that are gonna be a month or less. Anything beyond that, if it's gonna take four to five to six weeks or even beyond, then you can do a 50% deposit and a 25% progress payment. All right, so here's what, what the, how the progress payment works. You take half the money up front, that gives me the green light to start working. We'll onboard clients once we get the 50% deposit. Then we'll be able to schedule a discovery call, start strategy, put them into our project management software. All of this is, is done after collecting that 50% deposit. That's our green light to assign our team to this project. We collect a 25% progress payment, and you have to determine when this makes sense for you, but typically for us, it's before revision cycles. So most creative projects do uh, have up to two rounds of revisions. Before we even go to revisions, we get a 25% progress payment. 25% progress payment should, worst case scenario, cover all of your expenses. So that way the worst case scenario is you're breaking even. Now obviously you don't wanna break even, you wanna make some profit, but the worst case scenario is you're taking your deposit up front and you're collecting your progress payment which breaks you even and the 25% balance upon completion is your profit. So you get your profit when you're done with the project. So collect progress payments. Another way that we've done this, in it, this is typically for larger projects that are gonna take several months, even maybe a year, is uh, we just break up the project and the payment cycle based off of increments, whether that be monthly or quarterly or based off of certain milestones, you could figure that part out. Every project is a little bit different. Sometimes we have projects that are contracts that are gonna last a year and there's a clear start date and an end date and then we'll just break it up and even spread the, the same amount um, every month for 12 months. We have different contracts where we do quarterly payments for bursts of work. You have to figure out what works for you, but basically you're just charging equal amounts of increments based off of either the time or the work increment. So take progress payments, don't just work off of 50% of the money, do most of the work and chase your money afterwards. That's a no-go. So charge enough, charge progress payments, and the third tip is to turn that dollar fast. All right, so when I first started doing creative services, we we're basically selling websites for $1,000. I didn't know what to charge, and that's what we kind of landed on was $1,000. When we increased our minimum level of engagement to say, hey, we're not gonna work with clients that have less than a $10,000 budget, that's increasing our MLE 10 times. Now, a $10,000 project, sometimes I'm working with my uh, creative agency uh, uh, coach, coaching clients and they say, hey, Sean, I got my first $10,000 project. Congratulations, let's ring the gong, that's incredible. But then I ask them a few more questions and really what that $10,000 project is, is a $1,000 a month retainer for 10 months. Or even worse, maybe it's like 12 months, 10,000 10, spread over a year. It's a $10,000 contract, that's a year. It's like, no, $10,000 sounds good if you're able to turn it like in a month to maybe six weeks. But if you take so long to be able to turn that dollar, then it doesn't become profitable. Your dollar, every dollar that comes into your creative business 
is only profitable if you're able to turn it fast. So my goal is to make sure that once we get the money that we're able to fulfill it, execute it and deliver it as fast as possible. Because think about it, $10,000 sounds great if you get it in a month, but if you have to spread that over 10, 12 months, that's, you know, or 10 months, that's gonna be $1,000 a month. How many of those types of clients are you gonna have to secure in order to just make your bills, just to pay your bills? Then you're gonna spread yourself too thin and you're gonna overwork yourself. And so make sure you turn the money fast. And then the last tip to get your money right is think about profit first. There's this book by Mike Michalowicz and it's called Profit First. And basically what he's doing is he's challenging conventional wisdom of business accounting methodologies. And so traditional business accounting methodologies say income minus expenses equals your profit. And that makes sense when you think about it. I get $10, I spend $8, so my profit is $2. All right, well, it makes sense on a spreadsheet and it makes sense on paper, but what it doesn't account for is human nature. If you know anything about your business and running it, you know that every time you get money, you spend money because that's what we do, especially as entrepreneurs. You wanna invest it right back into the company. And so it's never income minus expenses equals profit because income minus expenses, that means nothing's left over. We spend everything we get back into the business. And so Mike Michalowicz kind of turns this on his head and he says what we should do as business owners is think about taking profit first. Income minus profit equals expenses. Take your profit first. And so if you're not used to this model, a good way to start is start, starting with a small increment like 1%. All right, so if you get uh, $100, you put $1 into a profit account, $1 into an owner's draw account, $14 into a tax account, and then the rest goes into your operating expense account. All right, now obviously I don't know what your tax rates are gonna be and that tax number is just gonna be hypothetical, but the idea is that you have five different accounts. One of them is an income account and you're just paying the other accounts. So all your money goes into this one account and feeds the other four accounts. Profit, start small, even 1%. Owner's draw, which is 1%, that means you need to reward yourself for being an owner of your company, your taxes, whatever your tax liability is gonna be, and then everything else goes into your expenses. So now you're freed to spend whatever you need to spend on your business to keep the wheels going. Income minus profit equals your expenses. And so how do you spend your profit? Well, that's the money that you could invest back into your business, whether that's buying equipment, software, investing into employees or new ventures, things like that. That comes from your profit account. Your owner's draw account is a reward to yourself for a job well done. Your taxes, obviously Uncle Sam needs his money. And so you, there's no getting around that. And then now you have your operating expenses. And so the idea is to train yourself to live within your means by putting your profit first. I highly recommend getting the book and applying those principles to your business in a way that makes sense for you. So recapping to get your money right as a creative entrepreneur, charge enough. Think about what is it gonna look like to roll out the red carpet for your clients? How much is that gonna cost you? Now charge enough to serve clients the way you wanna serve them. Second is don't just do a deposit and a balance, make progress payments, whether that's a 25% progress payment before revisions uh, and then balance upon completion or splitting up the project cost on a normal schedule. Turn that money fast. Money isn't good if it takes you a long time to be able to turn it. So the faster you could turn that dollar into profit, the more you'll have your money right. And the last thing is make sure you prioritize getting your profit first. Income minus profit equals your expenses. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys in your business. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below or visit agency.butlerbranding.com for more coaching tips and advice. Uh -huh.